Welcome to Lecture 14 in the Communication 1110 class, Fundamentals of Speech. Right now you are working on your informative speeches and this particular lecture is to reinforce and add some information about uh, organizing your speech, which as you know I consider very important. And some of this will seem like a review, but some of it will be new information. And of course you should read chapter 9 uh, to go along with this chapter and if you want to look at the PowerPoint as well. Um, first of all, audiences need structure. That is the primary point I want you to get here is that your structure of your speech is not just for you, it's for the audience. Many scholars have researched the place of organization or what the was originally called disposition in giving speeches and found that few people can organize or even outline a speech's main points if the speaker himself or herself is not organized and doesn't help by giving them clues through the transitions, etc., uh, to help them with the main ideas and the structure. So that's, that's the key thing I want to I emphasize first is that the audiences need structure. This is for them as well as for you. And it's not just something that I love to see beautiful outlines. The outlines matter. Furthermore, the key to an, an organized speech is a good foundation of a specific purpose and thesis sentence. In fact, if you have a good thesis sentence, a lot of your work is already done. And we have uh, discussed that in the pa past, how to have a good, clean thesis statement and specific purpose statement that are related, that, re that reveal the points, and that uh, let the audience know where you're going in the speech. You want to be sure that you don't cover too much material and um, that you don't try to do too much in the speech because six minutes is really not very long. If this were a traditional class right now, we would do an exercise where I would have uh, a transparency or a picture on the screen and we would uh, do some organization based on that. And then I would ask everybody in the class to reach into their pocket or backpack and bring out an item, just random item, and put it on a table. And then we would talk about how we could organize these uh, items, whatever they are, into groups. And we write it on the board. And we come up with maybe 20 different ways, schemas or frameworks, that we could use to organize the um, the the items, which of course as you can imagine, a lot of keys and cell phones and, and uh, hand wipes and things like that. Uh, just sometimes we get some surprises, but normally it's the pretty much the same kind of thing. And I emphasize for them that a group has to have more than one item to be a group, so you can't have a group with one thing, and that they're looking for uh, similarities and patterns in the way they group things. And then I talk to them about, after we come up with the different ideas, I say, okay, and I pick on a student who's not there <laughs> that day, and I say, let's say Mary uh, comes up to you and says, what, what did we do in class yesterday? And you say, well, we put all this stuff on the table and we had to put it in groups. And she looks at you puzzled and you say, well, what kind of groups? And obviously you would pick one of the uh, schemas would be the most useful. And that's the point of the exercise, that there are a lot of ways that you can organize your material in a speech, but there's usually one best way for you to organize the material in your speech. So that's the point here of the exercise. Uh, in organizing, you look for the patterns and the similarities, and you also look for the best way to communicate the information. As you're doing your research, you are seeing a piece of data here, a piece of information here, a statistic here, a story here, and you're looking for connections of where these things go together whenever you write a paper or speech, you're, you're doing that in your research. And then you have to decide, okay, how am I going to put these ideas together? We will also do an exercise in class related to that as well, where we have a bunch of ideas and thoughts and you have to put them into an organized uh, sentence, organized framework. So the, the exercises help and uh, they will go along with this in class. But remember, there's no right way to organize, but there is a best way for communication purposes. When you're organizing a paper or a speech, there are three steps. And this is moving on to the fourth major point. The first one, subpoint A, is grouping. Then B is going to be labeling, and C is going to be the ordering or the actual organizing of the points. 
When it comes to the uh, grouping part, uh, we want to keep in mind the KISS principle, the keep it simple principle, which means if you have more than five groups, you have too many <laughs> and you, you're going to have to get rid of uh, some of them. And along with that, you probably don't want to have five unless you have a really long speech. We've mentioned this before. It's best to have three or four main sections or points to your speech. And again, it depends on the time. If you look at your outline and you find out that you've got, for example, six main points, seven main points, eight main points, you probably need to look for, again, patterns and similarities so that you can see where things connect together and maybe you really do only have three or four main ideas. You're treating a sub-point as a main point, something like that. Again, in class we'll look at an exercise involving with this. Um, the, the other thing is that sometimes you uh, you'll look at your outline and you'll find out that you've got Roman numeral 1 and it has two main points and then Roman numeral 2 has 12 subpoints. And that's not good. <laughs> uh, you want to keep your groups relatively equal in size. Uh, if you have Roman numeral 1 with two points and Roman numeral 2 with 12 points, obviously you probably want to talk about that section, Roman numeral 2. So you may need to just recast your specific purpose statement and your thesis statement to just focus on that one area. And that's okay. Uh, or you may just have too many subpoints. That's possible too. So the outline allows you to look at this visually and say, hmm, got too many subpoints here. I need to do something about that. As I said before, there's no right way, but you want to keep in mind that the audience can't uh, can't deal with more than five points. You also don't want to have more than five probably subpoints under a major point as well. That's getting too much. And at that point then you're just going to have to sometimes discard extraneous information. Now if you're like me, I'm one of those people who um, if I've done the research, I want to put it in my paper. <laughs> and it's very hard sometimes, like, I've done the research and I've read this article, I'm going to make it fit into this paper somewhere. But, you know, that just doesn't happen sometimes. Sometimes we read something and it was very interesting, but it just doesn't fit into the specific purpose. So keep your specific purpose in mind and discard information that is extra or not helpful to it. The second step is organizing your outline, in organizing your outline, is labeling. And you have to be sure that the labels of your main groups, what we would call the main points, the Roman numeral points, correctly say what's in the group. You should use full sentences, we've mentioned this before, for your main points, not just a phrase or a key word. I should be able to look at it and see what's going on. Also, do not phrase these main points as directions to yourself. Sometimes I'll get outlines from students where it'll just say talk about or tell about or uh, explain, blah, blah, blah. And that's not what you want to do. You want to say what the thought is. For example, I have on the, uh, the uh, outline lecture guide, instead of talk about the health department, well, what are you going to say about the health department? Pet owners should contact the health department. That's a thought. That's a sentence. That makes sense to everybody. The other one is just a direction to yourself. And uh, trust me, if you're up in front of an audience, if you haven't, especially if you haven't practiced much, you might not know what talk about the health department means. So make your points clear to yourself and to me. And then, as the book talks about, use parallel phrasing uh, where possible. It helps you to remember and it helps the audience to remember. It won't always work with every uh, particular speech, but it is, if you have a good simple structure, it is uh, good to use parallel phrasing, and you can refer to the book for that. Let me remind you about um, on outlines that if you have a subpoint A, that means you're also going to have a subpoint B. Not necessarily a C, but you're going to divide it in at least two things. That's the idea. You've divided the main idea into two subpoints. So if there's an A, there should be a B. If there's a one, there should be a two. Also, the point of outlines is that the farther the indent is to the, um, towards the left, it means that idea is supportive or less important. So it allows you to look at it and say, hmm, I might need to, I have too many sub, sub, sub points here. Let me eliminate some of those. 
The last step in organizing is the actual or, uh, ordering which points go uh, in which uh, order. And you can't do that until you've done the first two. You've grouped and labeled. I like to use the analogy of having a, a yard sale. Now yard sales are, for me are not fun, but sometimes we have to have them. And the first thing you do in a yard sale is go out and go through your stuff in your closets and your basements, et cetera, and you create piles. You have a pile of, uh, this would go in a yard sale, people would give me money for it, et cetera. Here's a pile of stuff nobody would buy. Here's a pile of stuff I can give to a friend who needs it, has a new baby or something. Here's a pile of, oh, I don't want to get rid of this. I love this too much. So you have your piles, and then you take your pile of stuff you're going to sell, and you separate that into categories as well. Kitchen stuff, baby stuff, clothes, tools, etc. cetera. So uh, then you go out in the yard, and you don't just dump them on the, uh, the lawn. You keep them in nice areas, and you probably make signs for them in a way that people would be more likely to uh, want to buy them if it's a well-designed yard sale. And that's kind of the idea here. You're grouping, then you're labeling, and then you're putting them in an order. The uh, textbook talks about five basic structures for your speeches. There are a few more, but this, this five will uh, do nicely. The first one is chronological. And in terms of chronological, you want to be sure that if you're doing a speech on the development of, the history of, the evolution of, etc., that you don't get into a, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened. You're going to lose your audience if you do that. You need to separate all the, the activities of this development into three to four sections or periods or eras or something to help the audience keep it straight. There are two types of chronological. There's historical, which might be months or years or decades or longer. And there's the process time, which might be how long it takes to do something. Even under process time, there are two types of speeches. There's process where I can do it after you tell me, for example, cooking something. Yes, I could go home and cook it. And then there's just explanation of uh, of, of a process where I can't do it, but I would understand uh, more about how the process goes about. So depending on the type you have, process versus long historical time, instruction versus explanation, that's going to determine how you do the chronological too. But be sure not to get into a, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened kind of thing. That's going to be very hard for your audience. The second pattern the book talks about is spatial, and this involves any movement in space. It could be thousands of miles, it could be millimeters. Top layer of skin, next layer, next layer. So uh, it should be logical. You don't want to start in the Midwest, then go to the West, and go to the East. You would start East, Midwest, West, that kind of thing. The next is topical. Topical is probably the most common uh, organizational framework. It refers to types of things, categories of things, parts of things, or divisions of things. And uh, that's when you did your tribute speech, you probably used a, a, a topical uh, type of organizational framework as well. The fourth is problem solution. And this is usually used in persuasive speeches. In fact, when we get to our persuasive speech, that's the type of speech you will give a problem solution where we use a specific framework called Monroe's Motivated Sequence is very helpful. Um, problem solution is, has certain logical requirements that you, you want to address. The last one is cause and effect. And I usually prefer that a speech be just about causes or just about effects. If you try to do both, you're probably covering too much information. But there would be exceptions to that. In many speeches, what you'll find is that you'll use a combination of these methods. Your main points might be chronological, but your subpoints are topical. Or your main points could be topical, and your subpoints could be spatial. And that's, that's a good way to think about it for the consistency of it. But the point is that people need structure, and these are common sort of built-in structures that we already have of time process, space process, problem solution, etc. 
So uh, again, one of the main ideas that you uh, and skills that you will learn from this class is organization. I often have students say that, that it really helps them with organizing their thoughts and even organizing their papers later in uh, other classes.